guys and welcome back to a TNT run video. Today I'm going to talk about my school decision. And really, like, this decision will long be made by the time you see this video, but I realize that there's still, um, there's still a good reason for me to do this video, because these, the reasons, the pros and cons on both sides are still going to matter when, when you see this. And, yeah, my decision will be made. Um, you may not know what it is, um, because TNT runs my only video series, but... Um, you'll probably know what it is by the end of this video anyways so school this fall they initially announced in Saskatchewan my province in Canada that um, that we would be going back with no restrictions which is both ridiculous and not because children cannot spread coronavirus they don't spread coronavirus at the rate that their parents do it's just not statistically um, proven. It's just it's sheer statistics, it's sheer numbers, that children can't spread it to their parents like their parents spread it to them because they get over it so much faster. They might even get over it in just a day or two. It's just, you know, you've never heard of a child dying from coronavirus, so that's another reason, like, why should we be, why should we be that worried? It, it really doesn't matter. Maybe shutting down schools in the first place wasn't um, a good idea. So, what they're doing is they're going to introduce a new system for the whole, for this whole school, and that's going to be, um, I want to, <laughs> pinned them. Um, they said they're going to introduce a block system instead of semesters, so what that means is you'll have two classes um, in a day instead of your whole schedule, which is five in, in my district. Um, it's just so there's less movement around the building and there'll be less risk of spreading the coronavirus um, and it's whatever but um, they're not going to mandatory mask anybody um, in high school and my friends, my Asian friends, only my Asian friends are pissed off about that because for some reason Asians are terrified of the coronavirus I find that just hilarious because they're not any more vulnerable than anybody else is like, I don't, I don't really get why they're scared of it. Maybe it's because they made it and they realize how scary it is. Okay. <laughs> but, like, I don't, I don't understand. If, if you're an Asian and you're terrified of the coronavirus, please explain to me why your kind specifically are, is terrified of it. It doesn't make sense to me. So, you know, but generally the consensus around my friend, Asian, friends, Asian or not, is that we should be wearing masks mandatory. But my dad and I agreed that I'm not going to go to school if we have to wear masks mandatorily. Because if you wear a mask for eight hours straight in school, well, in, in any setting, um, you're going to rash on your face. And that's not good. Because you'll have to go through that eight hours a day for a week. Like, how is that a good idea? It's a horrible idea. It's scary. So... Really, I'm starting to think, you know, the online learning center has worked well for me in the past. I've done all my classes well on there that I've done on there. I think it is a little bit harder than to actually do the class in class, but I, it's a time saver though, because there's so much, why did I jump on after him? There's so much wasted time in the classroom. It's ridiculous. Like I was able to complete a whole other class when we were in quarantine because there was all this extra time where, you know, teachers aren't rambling. And that I can take to do um, other other work. I mean, most kids would probably choose to do <laughs> play video games or something else instead. But I'm not exactly like that. You know, I always like to learn things. I, I you know I like to learn things. I like to have responsibility around the house. You know, that's that's just me. I I, I see it as something valuable for myself um, in the future, the present. You know, it's it's good. It's good to get smarter. It's good to be. Um, smart for um, when you're eventually going to have to live in this world not under the roof of your parents. But anyways what the heck. So they said they'd be offering most classes online but choir is not one of them. And choir is one of the classes I was actually really excited to take. So I'm kind of wondering if I can do a hybrid system where I just go to school for choir and then I do the other ones online. Which I do need a tutor for um, chemistry, physics, and math because um... 
I, I was kind of having a hard time with that before, you know, so it's whatever, what can I do? <laughs> no, so basically online school outweighs in-person school for me at this point in time. But the problem is, is I don't know if I'd be able to graduate at my school with my friends, but perhaps that's not a concern I should have until we're getting close to that point, like in like, you know, eight months from now when I can actually think about graduating because things are going to have to get a lot better for us to have a normal graduation, right? Like just the way it is. Um, you know, I personally haven't thought that the coronavirus is actually a threat to our way of life, our society, our, our even our lives since the first two weeks. Because really, it doesn't threaten the majority of people. 60% don't show symptoms, but more people wouldn't show symptoms. That's just from the people that have been tested, and the death rate is only 3% of those who have been tested. So it's really not a threat. Absolute tops. Um, a million people could die in Canada, which would be devastating, but that's not going to happen. I'm just talking mathematically based on the death rate and the statistics we have, but that's being very pessimistic because more people would not show symptoms and they would never be tested, right? So there's no, there's not much to be scared about. It's not going to kill everyone. It's not going to destroy our society. You know, it's going to kill a lot of the old, right? And that's, yeah, that's, that's bad, but we isolate the old then. We selectively isolate people who are in danger. Wow, that was a horrible game for me. No, it's just common sense, right? So, anyways, why am I going on a rant about the coronavirus now? <laughs> like, really, it's not helpful. I'm talking about my school year this, this year. Not that, but, I mean, if everything were normal, I think I would want to switch to online school anyways. Like, I've really learned so much better like this another thing is i also want to do a wittenberg academy course it's just basically an online lutheran christian school and i just want the experience of it because i think it would be fun it would be cool i think it would be good for me you know etc um yeah i mean it would be another hour of work every day for me to do but I think it would be worth it and maybe it wouldn't be an hour because well I'm smart and I'd be taking first year logic like first year logic as a senior in high school like that's not that's, that shouldn't be difficult for me right you know I'd also meet, be able to meet a lot more like-minded friends which is of interest to, to me of course because like-minded people it's great they're rare you know but I know where to find them in this case that's not the reason why I want to do it, though. I just want the different experience. I want the different... Like, the the, uh, the thing with online learning that you need to know, um, especially when we had the Google Classroom quarantine crisis, because that wasn't helpful to the majority of us. It just didn't work. It's because online learning cannot just be a re-uploading of what's in the classroom. It can't be the teacher's normal lesson. It can't be all of it. It has to be a translation. You're translating it into a different form, a different way to learn. And that's, that's important because it's not, you're not in the classroom. You can't help your students directly in the same way. So you have to have them learn in a different way, you know, and that doesn't mean online learning is inferior. What? Okay. That was weird. It just means that online learning is different than in-person learning. It's just, it's just different. It's not more difficult. It doesn't mean it's for everybody, but I think if everybody were homeschooled, it would be okay. But online learning isn't what homeschooling is. Homeschooling is different. You actually have curriculum books and typically you have a parent that's able to teach you or you're old enough that you can teach yourself or you have an older sibling that can teach yourself. Like all the people that I know that are homeschooled, the people I know that are homeschooled are the older sibling, <laughs> so or they're the middle child, they're never the youngest. It's actually interesting. Hmm. But anyways, like if I were homeschooled, I think I would be a bit smarter. 
but I'm making the best of my situation by choosing to move to online education. Um, the only way I'm not going to do it is if I can't take choral at all. If I can't take choir at all, and I can't take information processing 30 that I want to take, because it'll teach me how to create a online website and be able to use the Microsoft Office documents. Um, if I can't do that at all, then... Okay, wow, that was quite the fall. Then we have a problem. <laughs> but... Um, then, then I'll have to probably suffer in person learning again. I'm thinking university is going to be better in that respect. You go for your lecture, you do the learning, then you do extra homework, hand it in. Like high school, there's just a lot of wasted time in general. With university, it seems to be like you're all there to learn because you're all there paying to learn. It's not free education. Like It's like quality over quantity, right? Quantity. More time. Free education. Not quality. What the heck? I almost died there. Um, quality. Um, either being homeschooled or online schooled. Whichever is better for you. And you get to learn at your own pace. Um, you know, you get help based on what you need specifically. Because everyone's different. Everyone struggles with different things. You know, the classroom, the brick and mortar classroom is a one size fits all method. That's what it is. It's, you're all in this room, we all learn the same, I, I, I can give you all the same amount of attention. It's, it's that. Now, the problem with this, my decision here is I'm not going to be able to see my friends. Or I will, just for Coral. <laughs> but I don't know if I would be able to anyways, based on the circumstances and the distancing they're going to put in place and things like that. Like, I'm hoping by second semester things will be quite normal. But, who even knows, right? Like, we have to go back to a normal society anyways. We can't stay like this. We can't stay in fear like this. Or economically, everything's gonna collapse. Like, just because things are starting to open up again doesn't mean it's okay. Doesn't mean everything's okay. It doesn't mean um, we're recovering economically. I think we're just... We're, we're just declining a little bit slower. No, because we're not completely open back up again. People still have been out of work for months. You know, businesses aren't able to op open and function at 100% capacity, meaning they're going to be dependent on the government for subsidiary wage programs for the people that work for them. Like my church got, um, I think, $10,000 grant, which actually is more than we need because we only have a secretary and a pastor that we have to pay. Um... You know, schools shouldn't need subsidiary because they just have to provide learning like everybody else, like like they like they always have, right? They they wouldn't get the wage subsidiary program, but it'd be like businesses that suffer as a result of COVID because they're closed down. But it's not a perfect system, is it? And I think the government picks and chooses a bit who they're giving money to. Like, I'm surprised we got money because we were part of a conservative denomination. We are a conservative Christian denomination. And they initially said that if you don't accept homosexuality and blah, blah, blah in Canada as a church, you're not going to get the wage subsidiary program. But that ultimately was retracted in the end um, because of the outlash, the, the, the outcry. And that's good because it protects our freedoms to believe what we want to believe. And I think everybody has the right to believe what they want to believe. Even if you're an extremist. <clears throat> and if you think we're an extremist as a church for not accepting homosexuality or not ordaining women into the pastoral office, then whatever. You know, you should at least fight for our freedom. Because as soon as our freedom's threatened, your freedom will eventually be threatened. That's the logical conclusion of this. That's always what happens in a, in a free society as things start to break down. You're like, haha, well, I don't really agree with these people. I'm just going to let them go down, and the ship's going to go down. But then all of a sudden, you're, you're yielding to everything that the culture is asking you to yield to, and yet you're still not accepted. You're still not able to... Wow, that's sad. You're still not able to benefit from the government's program, which sucks, really, quite frankly, but... Anyways, yeah, I'm going to do online school this fall. I also really enjoyed it a lot because a lot of people in school annoy me, and I really don't want to be back for that reason. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Um, if you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Um, have fun. <laughs>